2010 X Factor winner Matt Cardell has put his descent into drug and alcohol addiction down to winning the ITV singing show Blaming fame for his troubles, he told Lorraine Kelly on Friday's episode of her eponymous chat show, I could point the finger at any one thing at the time, whether it was leaving Sony, whether it was the relationship breakdown, whether it was the stresses of fame, it was just the culmination of everything The singer 34 who notably beat One Direction to the 2010 X Factor crown explained, it takes a long time to steady yourself after something like that It's quite backwards. So many people knew who I was but I hadn't put a record out yet It took a long time to find my feet and steady myself Matt was mentored by Danny E. Minog on the series, whom he said he still keeps in contact with She's been great ever since the show. She's been supporting me, she was one of, if not the only, mentor that took that role seriously, he remarked in a sly dig at other judges Cheryl, Lewis Walsh and Simon Cowell Matt is releasing a new album and is back with ex-record company Sony I this, he added, I ran away from how I was feeling. That's why new album time to be alive is called time to be alive. It's from being through rehab and talking about everything and realizing you can't run from the things that hurt, you have to face up to life. I was running away, and that's what got me at the end of the day of the album. He told Lorraine what he didn't want it to be I didn't want to do that again a heartbreak album. My fans don't want to hear about that anymore I'm weirdly glad of the fact that I went to the dark place. Behind a lot of artists, behind so much art is struggle and pain I'm strangely thankful for that pain to be able to pour it back into that album. He added, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for everything that's happened. I don't regret a thing. There's no shame in any of it. It was just my journey. This is just the next stage of it. Matt's troubles came when he started experimenting with powerful sedative tramadol, commonly referred to as hillbilly crack Speaking to The Sun last month he admitted that his escalating substance abuse saw his pop dream turn into a nightmare and soon left him without a manager and cost him his 18-month free relationship to Sarah Robinson as those closest to him gradually turned their backs Reflecting on the first time he tried tramadol, Matt revealed he coerced a doctor into prescribing the drug to treat a damaged thumb I started eating tramadol for fun if I'm honest, he said. Then the first time I did Valium was on a flight to law and that was it Valium and alcohol are lethal together anyway. It is a muscle relaxant and your heart's a muscle The singer's drug binges, often triggered by his use of alcohol, became so extreme that he would isolate himself in his London flat, where he believes he veered close to death on more than one occasion I didn't realize because a lot of it was on my own, he said. I would wake up in various parts of my flat, in the toilet, in my bedroom, on the bed, off the bed, in the lounge, and it would always be like, oh that's where it ended Matt's rock bottom came after his own drug dealer refused to sell him Valium prior to an appearance at the Jingle Ball in 2013, resulting in a scuffle that ended with the singer snatching the pills from his hand I was completely addicted. He was like, you're never having any more of them off me, the singer recalled 
A subsequent breakdown down at Heathrow Airport as he made his way to a Christmas lights ceremony in Ayrshire with his brother Dominic proved to be the turning point Looking back at the incident, Matt revealed his heightened emotional state was caused by drug withdrawal, prompting his emotions to well up The singer eventually got clean after checking into residential rehabilitation facility The Priory, and he admits he's feeling better than ever as he prepares for the release of his new album, 